This is the UK's bespoke bike show. It is all about custom and it is quite frankly amazing. Let's go take a look. This is Saffron Frameworks. It's a South African frame builder who is based in London. Now I'm standing next to a beautiful example. This is a stainless steel race bike. If you have a look closely at the paint job, you'll see those silver bits. That is actually the natural color of the tubes coming through. But have a look at this bad boy. That is incredible. So apparently this was commissioned by a customer. It took two years just in the design process. So particular were his demands, as you can tell. That is pretty striking, and I haven't really seen anything like that, although vaguely reminiscent of GT bikes back in the day. So, mix of tubing, we've got True Temper seat tube, we've got Columbus mainframe, and then we've got 4130 tubes there that are custom drawn. Now, why don't we take a minute to admire that? For anyone who's a fan of mid 90s retro, take a look at the bar and stem. That's a Cinelli Integra, reconditioned, repainted, and looking seriously cool. That bike is amazing. Critics of carbon fibre will often argue that the material has become a little bit ubiquitous now. But to those people, I would like to present Exhibit A, a Condor Leggero. Now this has been produced in collaboration with Brooks, who makes saddles, and they're celebrating their 150th anniversary. They've commissioned frames from a number of different frame builders, of which Condor is one. This is what they've done for them. Now, let's not beat around the bush here. It's the paint job that's smacking me between the eyes. Look at that. So that is a chrome paint that's then dyed and baked. Apparently, the materials for the paint alone cost over £400. So that's what, like about $600? But to my mind, that's indistinguishable from an actual metal tube. Anyone who's done a bit of mountain biking will probably be familiar with lefty forks. So how about having a righty? And then, how about having a righty all the way back down to your chain stays? That's absolutely bonkers. And even more bonkers is the fact that there is a full-on pinion gearbox in here. So I'm told that there's 18 gears, and that'll give you a ratio equivalent to having a wide ratio cassette at the back, and then four chain rings up front. So, dear Susan, who made these bikes, I've done a cracking job with this. And then, I also couldn't help but notice that behind me, GCN could have a lot of fun with that. I've got, I've got a GCN challenge in mind. Oh, and then, one last thing from dear Susan, uh, they've made some bottle cages for Lloydie. <laughs> this is very new, as in literally last couple of weeks new. If you're a mountain biker, you might be familiar with Lauf Forks. If you've seen one, you'd certainly remember it. But this is their first outing into road, or at least all road. So it is a suspension fork. The suspension is provided by these leaf springs here. So there's 30 millimeters of travel, no damping. It is literally just these 12 leaf springs. Pretty amazing. And you've been wanting to know, I'm sure, what it's plumbed into. So this is an engineered bike. So they are a British company based in Bristol. And this is their gravel model. That's a cool looking bike. Now this, this just might be the innovation of the show. So this is a Moss Bikes, it's an adventure bike. And that little thing there is a little tap because in that down tube is whiskey. That's right. So you can go on your adventure and you will always have a wee dram to have around your campfire at night. To get it in there, there's a little device stored inside one of the seat stays. You attach it to the top tube, and then you put your whiskey in it. This bike was built by Robin Mather. And it has to be said, sometimes, sometimes you don't need words. We'll just stand here and take a moment. So another bike for Dan here. Or rather, perhaps, a bike for, for one of us other presenters to ride for Dan. That might be more accurate. This beauty is from Tolbert Frameworks. Now let's take a closer look. We've got 
steel frame but with a carbon integrated seat post so literally that is carbon right from the bottom to the top and then it's just bonded into the steel frame and then look how slender those seat stays are that is seriously cool and then finally we can't not admire the paintwork the uh, handiwork of dr bobby and this is actually his personal bike If you have been watching the GCN show, you will have seen on Tech of the Week a few weeks back, we featured Bastion Cycles, and here is a Bastion Cycles bike. Now, we got really excited because it is incredibly cutting edge for a number of reasons. Now, if you tear yourself away from the really beautiful carbon tubes, we'll go straight towards these lugs. Now, that is a custom printed 6.4 titanium lug. And what it means is that effectively, each time a lug is produced, it can be completely unique. And I have in my hand a custom printed 3D dropout. And if you can look in that, you will see just how incredibly intricate 3D printing is. It's absolutely mind blowing. Then the next thing that is really cutting edge is about actually the process of buying one of these bikes, should you wish. The two guys that set it up are from the automotive industry and they've managed to qualify the bike handling attributes and so you can actually look on the website and you can pick the kind of bike that you would like to ride and then from that you can get the geometry for your custom bike and then finally the other thing often if you buy custom you may have a slight weight penalty especially if it's in steel or titanium but this so i'm told the frame set including the integrated seat post weighs just about 900 grams which is seriously light and it's got discs Now this is another bike by Robin Matha, and I think it's fair to say it is completely bonkers. But there is method behind the madness. So Robin wanted to try and quantify how a bike rides the way it rides. And so this is an attempt to do just that. So you'll notice there are four possible head angles here. So that is a standard 73 degree head angle, and that's where his handlebars are mounted. And that one is 81 and something. That is 90 degrees, and then that is 60 something. And then at the front wheel, to accommodate for that, you can change where the front wheel sits. So that affects the trail of the bike. And then, this is the stroke of genius. So the bike feeds what it's doing back into this thing here, which prints out a graph. And so this thing here is literally how your bike is riding. So this one moves the blue line. So that tells you how far you're leaning. And then the red one is steering input. And I'm not entirely sure I know what the black one does. But it's early days yet. We don't actually know the results. But one thing's for sure. I'm going to be quite interested to know what happens. Fair play, Robin Mather. GCN's just got some new science glasses. Woohoo! My word. The clarity, the insight. Well, I don't know whether you can tell, but I flipping love custom built bikes. The only question now is whether it's going to be made out of steel or titanium or carbon or a mix. Maybe you can help. Let us know in the comment section down below what's it going to be. Now, if you want a little bit more bike tech, we have plenty on GCN, including the recent Taipei bike show where I went out to Taiwan to have a look at some amazing stuff. Click through up there and you get through to that video. Or for the recent Rota Uno group set launch, click just down there for my first impressions. Finally, subscribe to GCN. Just click on the globe.